So the Mars IDE offers the ability to work with macros. So macros aren't the same as function calls. What it means is that you have maybe a, a, an element, a glob of code that you'd like to replace with something else um, equivalent to it. And so that can sometimes make your code easier to, to troubleshoot, to debug, um, and to maintain. So there is a directive. So if we go to the help menu and you look at the available directives, you'll see that there is a .eqv. So this directive, .eqv, it substitutes the second operand for the first. The first operand is the symbol. The second operand is an expression. So in many ways, it's like the pound defined of C. So the first operand is a symbol. And the second operand is the expression. Um, so second uh, substitute the second for the first. So if I write CTR, when it's defined like this, it's going to be replaced with um, T0. So this particular individual was using T0 as a counter register. Um, hence, they decided to name it T0. Not saying that that's the best thing to do because it may be used for multiple reasons, but that's what this particular individual did. Um, syscode, they replaced um, V0 and used the word or the, the, the name, the mnemonic, the shortcut, syscode instead. So what does that look like? If we look, um, let's go further down. Um, here. So in this particular example, there was some code here that was designed to grab input from a user. And so it moved a particular ad return address into a temporary address space, so temp address and, um, and was considered T3, so TMP, um, and then TMP address 1 and 2, or T3, 4, and 5. So instead of working with the registers directly, he decided to give them names because he most likely thought that that would make it easier to, um, to work with and understand the code. Now, the entirety of the code is really kind of summarized beautifully in this main where he gets the input, does something with the output, prints out the out what the user entered, does a, some other function, copies information and swaps elements of a string of characters, and then prints the output. So this get input is shorthand for a jump and link. So now the macro and in macro um, directives start and end um, elements of code that you wish to replace. So with this macro, you can have maybe a number of lines of code, and then it can use that information as though it were just one line of code. So it allows you to replace and simplify multiple lines of code with just one line of code. So that's macro. And if you take a look at the, the manual for that, we go over here to directives, um, you'll see that there's macro. And then there is the end macro. Now, for more involved or detailed definitions, um, you can look at some of the examples that are here listed in the, the manual. So instead of having your program just run to completion, let's say you just want the program to finish and stop. You could simply write the word done if done actually does um, what's stated here, there's a 10 placed inside of V0, and then there's a syscall. So done essentially gets replaced with those two lines of code. It's a more concise um, way of, of, uh, of exiting a program. It's kind of like a return. And a little bit more formally like a return, 
would be like a return one, but a terminate with a one. So you can have an argument um, or parameter essentially that is presented to a macro and it will work with that. So if you use dot macro and you give it the name terminate, put in parentheses and you indicate that you have a termination value, it will then be able to um, use that parameter. So it really acts as a variable, like a function call. But ultimately, when you say terminate with a one, it will replace that code with this code. And it's different from a function in that a function has some overhead. It involves a stack, putting things onto the stack memory, um, doing what you're going to do, and then restoring the stack and the state of the machine. So this has some efficiencies in that it doesn't require the full-on um, complexity that a function requires. So macros um, can be pretty powerful elements of, a, of your code. So for example, you can have your code then start to look a bit more like a formal programming language. So if I wanted to define something called print int that can take either an integer or take a register value, I could define this with macro print underscore int and then give it a parameter, load up a one into v0, what's going to give us the ability to print integers, do um, the work here to move that value into a0, and that's going to be the value that we print. And so we'll go ahead and print that, either that register, if we toss it a register, or it will print that integer value. So um, arguments may be either an immediate value or a register name. Um, and then there are other things that you can do, um, maybe simulate looping mechanisms or print strings. Um, other examples are shown in the text um, that would allow us to better understand how the EQV, the equivalence directive, is used. So you might find some of those things useful.